friends i am dr amdekar and in this video i am going to make a strong plea that a good clinical history can almost give you a diagnosis to the tune of 80 to 85% friends some william osler said more than a century ago that medicine is a science of uncertainty but the art of probability we need to arrive at a provisional diagnosis which is indicative of a most likely probable diagnosis based on a clinical reasoning contributed by a good clinical history taking skills and of course further fine tuned by physical examination and investigations if necessary friends every disease has four components for us to analyze first is the site of disease that's anatomy next is the type of disease that's pathology then comes the cause of disease that is etiology and finally the functional status of the affected organ whether it is stable in function or almost dysfunctioning or even failing unless all four components are found out on good clinical history taking and analysis the diagnosis is not complete first considering the anatomy we all know that a patient presented with vomiting could have not only the upper gi problem but also may be a central nervous system problem with raised icit it could be an acute liver disease a chronic renal disease a chronic adrenal disease it could be a metabolic disorder it could be autonomic nervous system dysfunction it could be vertigo it could be migraine <clears throat> and so on and so forth the first issue to discuss refer is where is the disease what is the anatomical diagnosis friends ask questions related to finding out the exact system involved and once you decide which system is involved go further down to find out which part of the system is involved i call it a micro anatomy <clears throat> for example a clinically related micro anatomy of the respiratory tract is is it an airway disease a lung parenchymal disease pleural disease or an interstitial disease each part of this system has some unique feature in terms of symptomatology like if the cough is a major or a severe symptom it's always an airway disease and if it's a dry cough it's an upper airway and if it's a wet cough then it's a lower airway disease whereas a lung parenchyma presents also with cough but usually mild and other symptoms like fever or breathlessness predominate and when you come to a typical pleural disease a chest pain is a unique symptom friends learn to ask questions where you can find out not only the anatomy but also micro anatomy for example a micro anatomy of the liver for a clinical purpose is is it a hepatocyte disease a biliary tract disease or a reticular endothelial disease or a venous system disease each part of the liver has some unique symptom complex and you need to ask questions to elicit which part of the system is involved thus friends a good history can locate not only the system involved but also the micro part of a system that is involved can we go bit beyond that yes for example if a patient present with hematuria then your first question is it's a renal disorder mostly and therefore if it's a fresh blood it's likely to be from the collecting system and if it's a cola colored blood then it's likely to be from glomeruli therefore micro anatomy is the glomerular renal disease can we go deeper into microscopic anatomy for example a glomerular hematuria could be endothelial glomerular or an interstitial glomerular disease and endothelial glomerular disease typically present with oliguria and hypertension besides hematuria whereas an interstitial glomerulonephritis 
presents only with hematuria without oliguria or hypertension. And epithelial glomerular disease has no hematuria but presents with a generalized anasarca. Well, thus a good clinical history can elicit not only the anatomy, not only the microanatomy, but also the microscopic anatomy. Having said this, ne the next thing is to decide the pathology. And the pathology could be one of inflammation, acute inflammation by swelling, redness, heat, pain, tenderness, we all know that. And a chronic inflammation by mainly the constitutional symptoms like loss of appetite, loss of weight, along with the milder symptoms of inflammation. One can have a degenerative pathology indicating a slowly worsening function of an organ or it could be an infiltrative disease like a tumor where the presentation is the slowly enlarging organ and with or without a dysfunction. One could have a symptom related to the blood supply or a nerve supply of a particular region and an infarction for example may present with a sudden paresis or may present with a sudden chest pain like a coronary heart disease. Friends, pathology can easily be found out once you have decided the microanatomy. And then of course the etiology is a guesswork based on use of multiple adjectives like an acute, subacute or a chronic disease. How is the onset? Is it sudden, explosive or it has been slowly coming up? Friends, in clinical medicine, what happens within a short time, few hours or suddenly is either mechanical, maybe allergic or immunological, metabolic, neurogenic or a vasogenic. But infection never occur over just few hours. It takes many more hours or a few days. Similarly, if the symptoms appear suddenly and also disappear suddenly but recurs, then this is typically an allergic or an immunological disorder. Thus, adjectives beyond this like static, progressive, worsening, improving can make us guess the etiology and the etiology could be congenital, acquired and an acquired commonly of course the infection or non-infective inflammation it could be uh, any f other non-infective inflammation like a collagen vascular disorder or malignancy. Besides, it could be toxins, poisons, deficiency disorders, so on and so forth. Friends, having discussed how all four components, including the functional stability of an affected organ, can be made out by a good clinical reasoning of a well-taken history, we have almost arrived at a provisional diagnosis. Now you put all this together to script the entire illness and this can be done by one of the two ways. If the patient presents with multiple symptoms, take each symptom analyze separately and see where is the common factor that it points to or even the other better way is that go back to the first symptom when the other symptoms have not yet arisen and see what you could have made out, whether you could have anticipated the second and the third symptom. And once you learn this act of script creation of an illness, you can almost see the whole illness in front of your eyes. And I think that is the best way to come out with a good clinical history and analysis. Friends, I hope you start practicing this kind of an analysis and you will be amazed to see the power of clinical history taking, a power of clinical reasoning to arrive at a provisional diagnosis in majority of the conditions. I think this is the crux of clinical medicine. Of course, further it will be fine-tuned by physical examination and the best part is you can anticipate which abnormal findings one would expect by a good clinical history and analysis and one can even anticipate which test results could be abnormal. I hope you have enjoyed this aspect and to me as a clinician this is the best thing that we must learn all of us.
द नेक्स्ट वीडियो विल बी प्रेजेंटेड बाय डॉक्टर राजेश चौकानी एंड हिज टाइटल ऑफ द वीडियो इज फीवर एंड नॉट ओनली फीवर बट फीवर मीन्स मच मोर आई होप यू कंटिन्यू टू बी विथ अस थैंक यू वेरी मच